We are back with a recap of the Blue Jackets 5-2 loss against the Blues in St. Louis. Uh, this is the third consecutive home opener that the Blue Jackets have played in. I don't, I don't really think that excuses uh, their 0-3 record, but it is something uh, of note. So let's get right into the good and the bad. Starting with uh, the bad is that, that horrible 10 minutes to end the game completely uh, wasting all the momentum that the Jackets had spent building in the second period and even in some of the third period. I thought they had some decent momentum uh, before that uh, third goal for the Blues that they were they, they, they could build off of and maybe at least try to get this game into overtime and see what happens from there. Uh, but once they let that first goal in, they completely crumble. They give up another goal two, uh, not two seconds, but 20 seconds later. And then the final insurance goal was a joke. Uh, the first goal, a weird kind of turnover from... Boquist that gets out, tied up in Orensky's skates and it creates a, a four on two for St. Louis. That, that's fine. Stuff like that happens. You'd rather it not see it, but it, it is something that is going to happen every now and again. But the second goal was just horrible defense. Uh, Jake Neighbors, I think that's his first name. Jake Neighbors just walked all over the Blue Jackets defense, made them look silly uh, on his goal. And then that third goal, Johnny Goudreau skating backwards, his backwards momentum taking him away from the puck that he's trying to get. Uh, he turns it over to Vladimir Tarasenko, who would end up getting his second goal of the game. Uh, Elvis not set in his crease at all. Uh, that was a really good way to come out of a timeout. That was awesome uh, for the Blue Jackets. Uh, Jake Bean, I, I still I don't get why he's still in the lineup. Uh, the first two games he was in with Goodbranson, that defensive pairing has been awful so far throughout the season. I know they're, they're not going to sit Goodbranson, so at least uh, bring Blankenberg in. He looked noticeable in the games that he played in the preseason so hopefully maybe that unlocks something with the third pair that hasn't been uh with Jake Bean in the lineup so far because it, it's been it's been a rough ride I'm not saying that it's all Jake Bean's fault of course Eric Branson uh has some share in the blame for that but if it's not working you gotta change something else I mean and the defense in general not just the third pair the defense in general is still having issues that we saw last season that they said they're working on clearing the zone is still a struggle so far uh, apparently according to a Brian Hedger tweet there's they're implementing a new system that they're still working out the kinks to and they're saying that they hope that it improves on five on five when it gets you know when the players fully get it down I would like to see this new system start to work sooner rather than later uh, because right now the Blue Jackets are tail spinning this is a Murphy's Law start to the season where uh, you not only are you not winning any of these games by the end of it it doesn't even look competitive I know they competed with St. Louis very well for uh, 50 minutes of this game but if you don't uh, show up in the final 10 minutes then it might as well have been a non-competitive game uh, you're being outscored 5 to 14 so far across all three games you're giving up almost three goal five, almost five goals a game excuse me that is uh, terrible and awful and you're not gonna you're not even gonna sniff the playoffs playing like this uh, and that's what it looks like so far and help is not, you know, line A is not coming back for weeks. They do have guys who are getting hot in AH in the AHL, and I'll get to that in a second. But as far as internal growth from the organization, we're not seeing it from this defense. Uh, Wierenski and Boquist, they haven't gotten it going offensively. The shutdown pair of Gavrikov and Peak uh, haven't been shutting down anything really. And the Bean and, Bla and Bean and Goodbranson line has just, the pairing, excuse me, has just been uh, terrible so far. Uh, so for as far as the Jackets go, not a good start to the season. This game uh, just kind of, it looked like they had something good going in that second period and a little bit in that third period. But beside, uh, but in the final 10 minutes, they went and uh, completely threw everything they were building down the drain. And now it's an 0-3 start. And the schedule, again, not getting really any easier until you hit Arizona, uh, I think in 10 days. And they have like a few more games before that. So they could be 0-7, which is not, not a good place to start. But I, I'm, I'm going to walk back some of the negative talk and tell, talk about some of the good that came out of this game. Uh, Elvis Merzlikens uh, fully recovering from his illness, hopefully. And Daniil Tarasov able to take that backup spot, I think, is a good thing. Again, Elvis Merzlikens played very well in spots where, again, he was bailing out the defense that wasn't able to be clearing the pucks. He was stopping one-on-one uh, -on -one chances for a while. I think a lot of the good from this game came from, you know, they were playing well until they weren't. They were keeping up with St. Louis until they weren't. They, they were playing generally pretty good and they were being competitive until they weren't, essentially. Uh, Johnny Goudreau getting career assist number 400 on Gus Nyquist's rebound goal. 
Uh, so nice to see him getting a career milestone in a Blue Jacket sweater. That's nice to see. Didn't end up helping them win, but again, kind of like, hey, Johnny Goudreau getting uh, his fourth 400th assist in a Blue Jackets uniform. Uh, that's nice. Uh, the starting lineup, I feel like they made some improvements. Uh, putting Gus Nyquist on the top pair with Johnny Goudreau and Boone Jenner makes more sense than putting Justin Danforth on there just because Nyquist is definitely more of a uh, sniper type of player that they can pair with Goudreau. Again, that, that one C with Boone Jenner hasn't uh, got worked out so far. That might be because Boone Jenner wasn't able to play for a lot of the preseason. They didn't uh, have really that much time to get a lot of chemistry between that center and that line, but maybe they make a change there soon. Who knows? Uh, Kirill Marchenko and Emil Bemstrom had two goals today in for the Cleveland Monsters in Cleveland. Uh, Marchenko has three goals in two games now. I feel like he should get a call up uh, sooner rather than later. Maybe they hold off on Bemstrom because they're really afraid to send him back down on waivers again once Lina gets back into the group. So uh, I think Kirill Marchenko, though, is definitely due for a call up uh, pretty in the near immediate future. And I am still holding out for Nick Blankenberg's season debut with the Blue Jackets. I do. I want to at least give him a shot, give him at least a game, and I would have done it today, but, you know, there's still plenty of time left. There's 79 games left. This doesn't mean the season is over necessarily. Uh, it's just not looking like it's trending in the right direction. Uh, so thank you all for watching. If you made it this far, please feel free to leave a like and a subscribe. If you enjoy the video and you'd like to see more like it, let me know what you thought about this game and how the Blue Jackets are going to look moving forward down in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you at the next one.